today with our last lecture of lecture two, um, talking about uh, basically polymer chemistry, uh, and we've talked a lot, a lot, a lot about step growth polymerization, and finally we're getting into today talking about chain growth polymerization. So chain growth, um, so chain growth polymerization or just chain polymerization has typically um, three steps at least, uh, and a possibly a fourth step. So one is initiation, propagation, chain transfer. This can uh, occur, but doesn't always have to occur. But termination always has to occur. So these three steps here, here, and here always have to occur. Chain transfer can occur, um, and it could cause some issues in our polymer and uh, obviously our resulting properties. So let's take a look at kind of what these steps are and how we're going to utilize them and deal with them in chain transfer. So we've talked about them previously, and we looked at kind of our curve of the degree of polymerization, number average versus p extent of the reaction. And for our chain growth polymerization step, we kind of ask them, we shoot up, uh, actually, sorry, opposite one. <laughs> Let me erase this guy. We actually shoot up instantly and then asymptotically increase. And that's because, again, we're adding monomers basically to the end of each of these chains. Um, whereas here in step growth, remember, we have to kind of link these guys all at the end. Um, so we shoot up and then asymptotically increase very, very slowly. So some of the common chain growth polymers that you probably encounter in your life, poly, uh, PVC, polystyrene, polypropylene, a lot polyethylene, a lot of different examples um, uh, and materials are basically produced via chain growth polymerization. Um, so some vinyl growth, ketones, we're going to actually look at some more. Um, these are some common, uh, basically, monomers for your chain growth polymerization uh, materials. So let's, let's look over here. Let's take a quick, these guys, excuse me. So yeah, so these are some really, again, whenever you see kind of these double bonds that we could break, that's where you're kind of going to, or opening up rings, ring opening up, or, you know, opening up these double bonds and opening up these rings, that's where you're really going to kind of see this uh, this process. We'll get there in just a second. So, three steps. Initiation, oh, and we're going to actually talk about quite a few, um, basically free radical polymerization, we're going to focus a lot on that. Once you know this um, free radical chain growth polymerization uh, process, uh, cationic, anionic are very similar. And then we'll talk about a cool one, Ziegler not a uh, catalysis, in just a second. So, um, but again, they all had the same steps. So that initiation, propagation, possibly chain transfer, and then termination. So let's see, and let's talk about how these steps occur. So for initiation, our first step, we need an initiator. So something, typically a free radical, uh, something with that kind of, uh, you know, an extra this kind of, you know, electron or, you know, again, it's a free radical that's going to attack that double bond. It wants to break it and satisfy, uh, basically, it's, you know, again, it's a free radical. Um, so it could be a carbon uh, carbon radical. There's lots of different ways, um, but it's going to attack basically monomers that have that double or, you know, monomers that have that double carbon bond because you need to satisfy it uh, and get it there. So there's lots of different ways. Um, first, we have to create a free radical. Uh, and then the radical has to be transferred to the monomer. So there are lots of different ways to create a free radical. So thermal decomposition, uh, redox reactions, ionizing radiation. You could even shoot an, you know, shoot an electron in there and create, you know, uh, you know, basically radiate particles to create that free uh, that free radical. But once you've done that, and once the double bond is broken, the free radical is formed, um, and that radical initiator is going to attack the next monomer. So we go through basically you attack it, you open up, you create a free radical. It attacks a double bond, then it is going to open up that double bond and it's going to propagate and it's going to attack the next monomer, and the next monomer, and the next monomer, and the next monomer. So this is transferred and propagated. Uh, so it's going to continue until the process is terminated and there are no, or when there are no more monomers. So very dependent on experimental conditions, obviously, temperature, solvent, environment, reactivity, et cetera. Um, during termination, it could occur via two ways either combination or Radical disproportionality. So combination, you basically combine uh, two free radical chains uh, and form a new carbon uh, backbone bond. The disproportionation uh, will create a polymer chain with a saturated carbon at the end and another polymer chain with an unsaturated carbon at the end uh, of the polymer chain. So they could interact with each other and other stuff. So let's look at this. I love this example of this kind of step. So first, we create a free radical via one of the methods that we've talked about previously. Initiation, that free radical attacks the double bond here. Attacks the double bond, it's, it basically bonds, again, an extra electron. It will bond here, satisfy here, opens up, and now we have, again, 
we've initiated, we've propagated that, or we've initiated that free radical. So this free radical here of this growing polymer chain is going to attack now the next monomer of polyethylene here. So this free radical is going to attack here, and it's going to propagate this chain. So you see the chain starting to grow here. Now, one step that can occur, uh, and let, let's, so let's actually let's skip that for a second. So this continues and continues and continues until, uh, again, we could either do combination where we meet uh, another carbon chain here, and we basically... This propagand chain here, this propagand chain here, they satisfy, and we produce basically our polymer, and we're done at that point. So one of the things that you want to be really careful of in chain growth polymerization is kind of this um, basically reacting and kind of ending, you know, you need to have an appropriate number of, uh, or enough free radicals in order to kind of propagate um, your, uh, your polymer chain. So the reactivity there is really, really kind of careful, to, uh, important to, you know, deal with. Now, one of the other things that can happen is you could get chain transfer that could occur after really after the initiation step or during the propagation step. Chain transfer is where you see the free radical attacks, and then, but instead of kind of propagating, you know, forward here, you could kind of propagate in another direction. What that leads to are some sections where we're branched. So we have polymer branching here. Uh, we'll get back to that in a second. So free radical polymerization can uh, actually create uh, a great deal of branching because again, it's, it's a stochastic process. The chain could just transfer the free radical is just attacking everywhere this carbon bond, and it, uh, that free radical can be transferred basically along that chain. So we'll talk about a method that we could use to control that in just a second. So that's the basic steps for free radical chain polymerization. So initiation, breaking that double bond, propagating there, termination, combining, and then you're good to go. So. You combine the chain, and again, you want to be careful for a chain transfer. Excellent. So we will then, let's go ahead and, let's see, okay, the last page here, last couple pages. Um, so again, and the free radical can be converted to some other byproducts as well. Excellent. So you can also have cationic chain polymerization, anionic chain polymerization, very, very similar process, except your, um, uh, all you're doing instead of a free radical, you just have a, for a cationic, you have a positive uh, carbonyl uh, or propagating uh, carbonyl here. For anionic, you have just kind of this negative charge here. But again, same principle. That's going to attack um, uh, basically that double bond uh, in your carbon chain there or in your monomer group as well. So cationic polymerization, uh, you'll typically see them as oil fin oil fins. Um, Heterocycle monomers are some examples. Um, Again, and um, in and camping. So anionic polymerization, you're gonna vinyl monomers are really the one that we're gonna kind of deal with a lot here. So uh, pretty really straightforward, and actually it's nice because you could stop it manually by adding water or alcohol. Um, but we'll talk. Uh, we'll focus a little bit on that. But the key thing there for same process: initiation, propagation, termination. Just the carbonyl here that you're dealing with: positive, negative. One of the you know big highlights. I'm sure the chemists out there are just cringing at my description. Finally, um, other, there's lots of different other types of chain polymerization, but again, the key steps are the same. But one of the nice things I want to talk about here is this method called ziegler natta cat uh, catalysis. So this basically use, uh, uses um, the initiator um, is this transition metal complex, and the propagating site is this catalytic complex. What does that mean? Um, it's basically living, um, uh, basically, what it allows is for precise control this um, catalytic complex is very, very precise. And what it happens, what it does is it can only propagate, um, you kind of think of this attacking here, it attacks here, and then when during that propagation step, it is only going to propagate in a certain direction. So it eliminates or reduces drastically the chain transfer step. So we don't have, we have minimal chain transfer um, if we use ziegler natta catalysis, again, because of that precise kind of lock and key bond type mechanism here. What does that mean? Well, for free, for free radical polymerization, we have lots of branches, right? For our polyethylene. For, uh, if we use uh, ziegler natta catalysis, for example, if we have minimal chain transfer, we're going to have very, very fewer branches. So, polyethylene can come in multiple forms. It could come in low-density polyethylene, which has lots of branches. LDPE, high density polyethylene, GPE, where there's minimal branches. There's also ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, 
which is just a super, super long polymer. Uh, the, there is some branches here, but it's just extremely, extremely large molecular weight polymer. But let's focus on uh, this, these two for a second. So when we talk about stacking, um, if I'm comparing uh, basically the thermal properties and the stiffness of these two polymers, which is going to be stiffer or which is going to have a higher melting temperature? How are these branches going to affect my ability to stack on top of one another? Well, the branches are going to hinder them, right? It's like, and again, these aren't isotactic. These aren't isomers. Um, so these branches are just going to occur, you know, basically stochastically randomly. So the branches are going to affect my ability to pack and get my intermolecular interactions closer together. And that is going to cause those intermolecular interactions to be much, 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 much lower. Instead, for high-density polyethylene, the fewer the branches, the closer I could kind of stack and pack on top of each other. That is going to lead to much higher stiffness, much higher... TM for, for crystalline, and that's what we're going to kind of deal with here. So again, depending on the polymerization route you choose, you could drastically change um, polymer properties, and that's again the focus of this course. So uh, that's basically the key thing, or uh, <laughs> kind of the key aspects for chain growth polymerization. So uh, next time we are going to get into and talk a lot about uh, different types of um, different types of chain models. So. Obviously, we talked about molecular weight being a key parameter here um, in terms of changing the properties of our material. So we're going to kind of describe the length of our material because obviously the length is important on the size of our polymer um, as because that scales with the molecular weight. But we're going to see how that scales and how we can kind of describe the size of our polymers as well. So more on that next time. Lots of der derivations and kind of some fun entropic spring um, effects. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.